stop scrolling. This is a sign that you need a Bible study sesh. So this is part three, and we're gonna be talking about Genesis chapters four and five. And this is pretty much all about Cain and Abel. Adam and Eve decided to be fruitful and they multiplied just like God asked them to. They had two sons. First they had Cain and then they had Abel. Once they grew up, Abel became a shepherd and Cain became a farmer. One day Cain came to the Lord and he gave him the fruit that he had grew. But Abel came and he gave the firstlings of his flock. The Lord favored Abel's offering but not Cain's and it really made Cain angry. He was so angry that the Lord could see it on his face and he said, why do you look like that? God pretty much says that if he continues to act like this, sin will be lurking at his door and it desires him, so he must not give in. Cain completely disregards this and lures his brother into a field where he rises up and kills him. This was the first murder with Adam and Eve, we talked about original sin. And as you know, with this sin comes a very hefty price. God asks Cain where his brother is. And then we hear the famous quote, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? The Lord realized what Cain did. He could hear the blood cry from the ground and he decides that he is going to punish Cain harshly. God tells him that he will be a fugitive and a wanderer for pretty much all of eternity. And since he was a farmer, if he tries to till the ground, he will not get anything from it. Cain thought this was too much to handle. And he was like, God, this is way too much. Like, what if what if someone tries to kill me now because of this great punishment I have and this terrible thing I've done? And God's like, oh, no one's going to do that because if they do, they themselves will be punished sevenfold. So God made sure to mark him so that no one will even try to kill him. After that, Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and continued to wander. Next, they describe the lineage of Cain, and it is a rough lineage. Since he no longer walks with the Lord, neither does his descendants. And we meet a great, 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 great grandson named Lamech. Lamech is the first polygamist. This in itself is a sin. He has two wives. He begins to tell his wives a story about how he slayed a man for wounding him, and that if Cain gets avenged sevenfold, then he gets avenged seventy-sevenfold. Here he is mocking the Lord and making the Lord's punishment to Cain look weak, and he's completely downplaying the wrath of God. We are then introduced to Seth, who is now going to be the son of Adam and Eve who walks with the Lord. Chapter 5 talks about Adam's descendants to Noah. So Noah comes from Seth's lineage, and it goes down the line all the way to Noah's father, who is named Lamech, ironically. It's interesting because whenever talking about Cain's lineage, the only person that spoke and had a quote within that was the Gregory grandson Lamech of Cain. And the only person who has a quote when talking in the lineage of Seth is Lamech, who was the father of Noah. The Lamech from Cain's lineage mocked God and downplayed God's wrath. Lamech from Seth's lineage says a quote when his son Noah is born. And it says, Out of the ground which the Lord has cursed, this one shall bring us relief from our work and from the toil of our hands. This son of his named Noah is going to do great things. And we do know who he is. He is the Noah from the story of the ark, which will be talked about in the next part. Part four, we'll be talking about Genesis chapter six through chapter 10. And here we'll learn about Noah and pretty much about everything on the flood and then God's covenant with humanity. So definitely stay tuned for the next one.